Joining me is International Rescue Committee President and former British Foreign Secretary David Miliband. Welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you. Great to be with you. David, uh, what kind of aid has the International Rescue uh, Committee been able to provide to the Syrian people so far? Well, we've been able to provide medical help inside Syria by running operations across border. About half a million Syrians have had the benefit of our medical aid. Another half a million inside the country we've been able to reach with non-medical aid, so that might be kits to help them get through the winter. And of course, in the neighboring countries, in the four key neighbors where two and a half, three million people have fled, we've been able to deliver a whole range of health, education, women's protection projects because uh, it's desperately needed. Explain to us how difficult it is to get help to the people inside the country. I think many of your viewers will have heard of these besieged cities in uh, Syria. These are areas that are basically cut off from UN help. It comes to international NGOs, non-governmental organizations, to try and get across the border crossings, weave their way between the conflict lines, and to reach people. We can track the medical aid that we're delivering, and we know that cross-border from Jordan, uh, from Lebanon, from Turkey too, we've been able to reach people in desperate need because 60% of hospitals in Syria have been destroyed, uh, 6 million people displaced within the country, so the need is great. and. The need for ingenuity is even greater. I know the UN, speaking of displaced people, uh, says that Syrians uh, are about to replace Afghans as far as the world's largest refugee population, and there's staggering numbers of displaced Syrians. Give us an update uh, uh, where the situation is now. The Syrian population is about 22 million. Basically, one in two Syrians has been displaced from their homes. Two and a half, three million have ended up in the neighboring states, six or seven million displaced within the country, and they're displaced because their own government is dropping bombs on their own cities, and that is the scale of the devastation that's happening. The 130,000 dead is, I'm afraid, only the tip of the iceberg. The IRC, though, is working uh, to also bring Syrian refugees to the United States. What's happening as far as that right now? I mean, at the moment, there's very small numbers of Syrians coming to the U.S. So less than 200 have been admitted here, even though historically the United States is the most generous country for accepting uh, refugees. We're calling on the U.S. government to raise by 12,000 the number of refugees who are allowed in and for those to be Syrians. At the moment, the U.S. takes about 70,000 a year. Uh, we've got a long history in San Diego, the International Rescue Committee, in helping uh, resettle people, some of them from Iraq, uh, from the Middle East. Uh, but at the moment, we're waiting for the U.S. government to respond to our call to raise that refugee number so that we can give the most needy cases a chance to rebuild their lives. Well, as you mentioned, San Diego is home to a large, a fairly large Syrian population. I believe about 2,500 live in the region. How likely is it that those Syrian uh, refugees, if they are able to increase in numbers and come to the United States, will relocate here? And I've been meeting today Iraqis rather than Syrians, about 30,000 Iraqis. But you're right, there is a small Syrian population. And so if, I hope, when the U.S. government decides to increase that number and allow some Syrians the most needy cases, the people who've lost, the kids who've lost their uh, parents, the widows who've lost their husbands, this would be an obvious place for them to try and rebuild their life because there is a, a Syrian community, albeit small, a wider Middle Eastern community that could give them some sense of roots and an ability to, a bit of stability that can allow them to make the contribution. These are skilled people, after all, educated people, the, the contribution that they could make to this community and this country. So it would be a second step, first step, getting the number uh, allowed into the country. Uh, They're not allowed in until the number goes right. up. And it's only when that happens that we can help the most deserving cases. I see. Um, how much will this humanitarian aid cost per year? The UN has estimated that there needs to be about six and a half billion dollars spent this year. That's inside Syria and in the neighboring uh, countries. Obviously, that's build, been building up over the last uh, three years. Last year, it was just four and a half billion. So you can see the scale uh, of the increase. At the moment, that's only about 60 percent funded. So the nations of the world need to stand up and support this because we know, although we're doing a lot of business in Syria, although half a million Syrians have had help from us, although we're working in the neighbors, there's a lot more that needs to be done because this is the defining humanitarian crisis of this decade. And actually, the Syrian Americans we've spoken to do say that a lot more should be done. What do you think Good. from the United States should and can be done? I think there's two things, really. First of all, it's desperately important that the norms of international law are upheld inside Syria. I mean, governments dropping barrel bombs and their own citizens is contrary to every humanitarian law that exists. And only when that uh, scale of fighting is reduced can we get in and really make the difference. Secondly, in the neighboring states, Jordan, a very close ally of the US, Lebanon, Turkey, and Iraq, they need your financial help too. And it's on those two fronts that really the US government and others face a test.
and and to financially support uh, the humanitarian aid. Financial and political, because at the moment this humanitarian crisis needs far greater political attention. Okay, IRC President David Miliband, thank you so much. Thank you very much.